Tax day is Monday, April 15th. Of course, the rush is on for a lot of last minute filers, but let's talk a little bit more about the whole process, what we know, what we don't know, and what you may see as a taxpayer. My guest tonight is the executive director of the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. He's Patrick Hedger, up late with me tonight here on The Final Five. Good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, so every time I see anybody in local news or the media talking about tax day, it's always about the last minute filers, things you need to know, things that you should know. I want to I want to get your perspective on this. How has the entire process for the average American taxpayer, has it changed for the better in the last 10 years? Yeah, I would say it's certainly changed for the better in the last 10 years, because what we saw under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the, the famous Trump tax cuts that were passed, was a massive increase in the standard deduction. So folks that used to have to itemize the deductions, and the most common itemization would be uh, the mortgage interest deduction. Um, because that standard deduction went so high, it actually made filing taxes a lot easier. Instead of having to calculate all of your various deductions, usually the standard deduction would be a lot more generous for a lot more people. So that's, that's made complying with tax is a little bit easier. Um, but certainly the tax code remains incredibly complicated, tens of thousands of pages long and all sorts of carve outs and caveats. So uh, I would encourage folks just be very, very careful when you're doing your taxes and encourage folks, you know, really don't try to do them on your own, get professional help. It's funny because every couple of years, and especially when we get around election time, you do have candidates uh, of all 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 stripes saying we have to reform the tax code, we have to overhaul it, we have to make it much easier out. It is still a very onerous uh, tax code to negotiate for so many people out there. And that brings me to this, this conversation that we had in Washington over the last, uh, especially over the last couple of years, led by the likes of Elizabeth Warren, who, who looked at things like you mentioned about new year tax on your own, uh, TurboTax. She wanted the IRS to, to adopt their own direct file a client out there. There is one. It doesn't, uh, it, not everybody has access to it, but are we seeing the IRS moving more towards a model like that, or will there always be room for these third party uh, marketplaces? Yeah, I think there's always going to be room for that third party because we don't really have an assurance that the IRS is in, working in your best interest, right? The IRS's job is to generate revenue. Um, and so you don't have that sort of in necessary adversarial relationship that you would otherwise have with a, a private tax preparer to make sure you get every dollar back that you're owed. And we're not seeing a huge uptake in the new uh, IRS direct file program. And I think it's really concerning because the, the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, has routinely found that the IRS at its call centers and at its in-person centers has been giving out incorrect advice. So I, I think as a taxpayer advocate, I'd like to see the IRS focus on its core mission first. I'd like to see it walk before it starts to chew gum and try to become a software company as well. Uh, especially uh, over the last couple of years since COVID, there was a lot of talk about uh, the IRS and whether or not it was uh, capable of handling all of these all of the phone calls and all of these inquiries, because people people have questions. It is not an easy process year to year. Uh, very few people go through the same routine every year when it comes time to, to, to filing their taxes. Has the IRS done any better in this effort to improve the way it deals with you and me and everybody else? Because in the eyes of them, we are we are customers. So briefly after the injection of cash that we saw into the IRS and one of the various large spending bills that we've seen in response to COVID, we did see the IRS getting better about picking up the phone when you call. For the, for a while, there was an abysmal, I think it was like something under under 25% of calls were ever picked up to the IRS. Those numbers spiked a bit, but they've since fallen back down to earth a little bit. So that's really concerning. We've seen a lot of IRS resources go more towards enforcement. And I think that's concerning because I really want to see the S of the IRS reemphasized. I need, it needs to be more of a service versus an adversary. We, we've heard a lot about enforcement for people who, for lack of a better term, are tax scoff laws, uh, whether or not the IRS is, is putting more resources in, into tracking those people down. Are we seeing a, a bigger emphasis on enforcement, or has that been more or less smoke and mirrors? Yeah, so we have seen a greater emphasis on enforcement, but unfortunately, that enforcement hasn't been at the higher end of the income spectrum. Prior to the injection of cash into the IRS for enforcement, if you lined up poverty data in the United States and data on where IRS audits are happening, they look like the same map. And unfortunately, what we're seeing now is that the IRS has just moved to slightly higher income brackets, more middle income folks for enforcement. So the, you know, the guy sitting on his yacht that everybody wants to go after isn't really facing the kind of scrutiny that people expected. Patrick Hedger, good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And the final five is back after this.